Alden speaking. Oh, hello, Henley. Hey, Crane? No, I haven't seen him. Now, how should I know where your reporter is? I'm a warden, not an editor. Yes, 12.30. No, you couldn't make it. What? No, I don't want to leave. What do you think of this case, Gene? I think you're just making an example of the clock girl. I guess she is right around. You can't come in here. I am in. Hello, Warden. Hello, Crane. It's all right, Martin. Yes, sir. You got a hell of a nerve to crash my office. Ah, you haven't got any more belly for this job than I'd have if I was you. Now, what do you got to say? Nothing. I don't want to be quoted. And I mean it. I thought you was going to give me a break. Keep your shirt on and you'll get it. Brandon's coming. Brandon? That's your break. He ought to be here any minute. What's he showing for? Some of you fellas have been riding him on this Clark execution. And he wants to tell you where to head in, I guess. Henley just called for you. Oh, he's in a sweat again, is he? Well, let him wait. You've got your beat. Now get out. There's a phone in the outer office if you want to use it. No, thanks. I'm going to wait for the DA. You'll get out of here. Here he is now. Bring him in. If you get me in a jam, I'll break your neck. Come in. Shot. Oh, sure. Hello, Warden. Hello, Phil. How are you? Uh, hello, Crane. Hello. That was a sweet picture you painted of me in the home edition yesterday. Wait. Still out to get me? Yes, you bleeding disciple of purity and phony justice. I'm out to get you. My friend, Mr. Crane. In the last six months, you've done things in this town that no district attorney's ever done. And why? Because you want to make the world better? Not by a jugful. You've gone nuts. You're goofy with your own power. And I'm out to trim you. Yeah, I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Crane. Well, you'll have reason to be sorry when I get through oiling you. Crusading against poor little kids like the Clark gal, who only did what any dame would have done. She committed murder. She took a human life. All right, suppose she did. She had a reason to, in defense of her honor. <laughs> oh, don't be a fool, Crane. You know what that girl was. If a gal wants to play around with a few friends, that don't make her what you painted her. Mary Clark was a notorious character. My eye. There's a difference between giving and taking, and if you don't know that, your education ain't been complete. When this guy tried to wrestle and take, it was just the same to her as though she didn't know what it was all about. She may not have been a paragon of virtue like you, but to her, she was defending her honor. A noble viewpoint, Crane, but one hardly to be recognized in society or the law. Altruism cannot influence jurisprudence. And how does the chorus go? Like this. I'll run you and your tabloid out of this town. I'll clip your wings and teach you that this city will not tolerate scandal sheets or filth. Come on, Alton, let's go. Coming, Crane? Ah, uh, I'm going to do my homework. Ah, uh, nuts. Eddie Crane talking. Give me Henley's office. Henley? Get this. Brandon showed up to see the Clark girl burn. Ain't that a honey? Sure, it's a beach of rummy. Get set. District Attorney, present at Clark execution by Eddie Crane. Who give me a byline and like it. Here we go. Crusading for humanity, the citizen again rises in defense of American womanhood as Mary Clark met death in the electric chair this morning at 12.30. Convicted of murder when she killed in defense of outraged honor. This girl, painted as a murderous harlot, met death with a smile. A smile of forgiveness as the forces of the third withering shock releases its pitiless grasp and left the shell of all that once was Mary Clark, known and loved by all. 
Say, cut that last line and finish on pitiless grass. Yeah. Cut the known and loved by all. Hello? Oh, hello, darling. Oh. Well, how long will you be? I'll be at least two hours, Tess. Maybe three. Yes. The boys want a statement. Oh, no, dear, don't. No, don't do that. No, you go to bed, honey. I'll get a snack on the way home. That's a good girl. Good night, dear. Good night. All right, Warden. Let loose the hounds. Come in, boys. Well, what you got to say to us, Brennan? You going to run for governor? Uh, why did you railroad that dame? Are you going to close the speakeasies? Don't close up Jake's. His gin is okay. <laughs> what are your personal feelings toward the girl? What did you want to see her sizzle for? Yeah, how about yeah, that, Brennan? Uh, That's what I... Wait, wait a minute, please. Wait a minute. Now, you're all wondering why I'm here tonight. I'm going to tell you. You've all been wanting a statement. Well, you're going to get it. Now, you've all had me on the pan for the stand I've taken in this Clark woman's case. You, Bart, have said that mercy should temper justice. I quite agree with you. It should. You, Harmon, have said that my prosecution was merely another conviction. Another execution to add to my record for a gubernatorial campaign. Well, I'll spike that one right now. I've already rejected the nomination. And you, Crane, you have called me a bleating reformer. You've said I was crusading. Well, maybe I am. For the administration of law, order, and justice. The peaceful law-abiding citizens of our United States stand aghast at the appalling list of unconvicted crimes of which most of our courts are guilty. Now you know and I know that there are more lawbreakers on our streets than there are in our penitentiaries. And that many of them have been tried in open court of law and miraculously pronounced innocent. A travesty on justice. Boys, it is not a pleasant task to demand a human life as the price of a broken law. But when the law is definite upon that point, those entrusted by the people with the administration of that law have no choice. Now you know. You know and I know that there is not one single extenuating circumstance in this Clark woman's case. It's an open and shut affair. She killed her man and she killed him in cold blood. Despite Crane's crocodile tears about her besmirched honor. Mercy can temper justice. But maudlin newspaper sentiment cannot. Laws are made for the preservation and continuance of civilization. And if the interpretation of those laws and the administration of them in my peculiar office makes me appear as Crane is pleased to designate me a bleating crusader, very well then I have no argument to offer. I'm a bleeding crusader. And you can do what you like about it. That's all, boys. Good night. Mr. Henley, it's all here. I got it. We can ring it up for a sensation. What do you think, Shane? It's a pip of a story, all right. Ah, you bald-headed little dodo, you're not thinking anything. You just sit there and pass the buck. Well, I don't want to okay the story without Mr. Henley's consent. And I don't want to kick up a stink. Now we're running a newspaper, not a tabloid. I am Tammy's bustle. I got the story. We can put Brandon on the pan and try him.
What do you think? Tip of a story, all right. What do you know about a story? You've been on that city desk so long, you think we're running a roll of tissue paper. Damn it, Eddie. Brandon doesn't know about this himself. All right, all right. We'll tell him. Well, we're not running a tabloid, and I don't want to rake up a woman's past. What do you think, Shane? It's a tip if of you a... say it's a tip of a story again, I'll bring you. Come on now, say something. Well, this would nail him to the cross, all right. Yeah. He needs a kick in the pants. But I hate to give it to him through his wife. Where did you dig up this dirt? From Bill Caxley, my old buddy in New York. Are you sure you're right? Oh, sure. But are you sure you're sure? Sure, I'm sure, I'm sh You got me doing it now. Oh. Well, we can't be too sure about a thing like this. You don't suppose I'd let Brandon make a sap out of me, do you? It's the paper I've got to protect. Well, what's the paper for if we're not going to protect the public and tell them the truth? You don't suppose I'd rake up a dame's past just to ring the bell, do you? Not me, Mr. Henley, not me. But we got to print the news, no matter who it hurts. We represent the masses. I'll get you a tent, Eddie. You're in the wrong business. Oh, but... But what? Well, won't this story knock Jimmy Dale out, too? Sure, you poor pinhead. It's a great pity. He's a swell guy, but it can't be helped. Kind-hearted Simon will agree. That's dynamite. The whole thing checks, I tell you. Tess Marlin blew in here in 29 from Cleveland. She went to work in Judge Bart's office as his stenographer. When the old bird croaked, she went over to Brandon's office as his secretary. It's the same girl, I tell you. The whole thing checks backward and forward. She must have been a looker. Was and is. She was a hot mall in her time. Well, if we're going to break this story, we better check up on her in Cleveland. That's a lot of fertilizer. Why do we care what she was doing in Cleveland? The point is, she married Brandon. <laughs> and that wasn't all either. <laughs> Allow me. Oh, thanks. I heard someone. Oh, don't be silly. Oh, anyway, I'd better run along. Early morning appointment. I'll call you. Not before 11. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night. Hello, Marsha. Is Bill home? No, not yet. Good night. Marsha. Well, who is the handsome Beau Brummel? What business is that of yours? Well, after all, dear, you are my husband's sister. And I suppose that gives you the privilege of prying into my affairs? Shouldn't feel like that. Then how should I feel? Where I've been and who I was with is my business, not yours. Where did you meet Mr. Lynn? Lynn? What on earth are you talking about? Haven't you ever heard of Jerry Lynn? And who is Jerry Lynn? A very notorious blackmailer from New York. And what has that to do with Mr. Carson? The resemblance was quite striking. Well, of all the... You mind your own business. Quit spying on me. Mr. Carson is a perfect gentleman. If you were half as nice, I'd be satisfied. Hello, Peacock in? I want to speak to Mr. Dale, please. 
tell him Tess... Tess Marlin. Tess? What? What? What's the matter? Well, of course I'll help you, but do you think it's wise to come here? Jerry Lynn and Brandon's sister. Hmm. There's a, there's a side road that leads up to the garden. Drive in there. I'll meet you, yeah. About 15 minutes? All right, goodbye. If Joe Carson comes in here again, tell him I want to see him. Yes, sir. How this for me? This is attorney's wife, former hostess in the nightclub. It stinks. All right. Who shall sin? Our district attorney lives in the glass house. Boy. Listen, you yellow belly. Tess Marlin was hostess in Jimmy Dale's Silver Bow in 50th Street, New York, three years ago. She was a hot mama and his girl. Get that? His girl. But can you prove that? Of course I can prove it. It's all here. So I'll feel Dale out, and in a couple of days I'll have a story for you. I'll curl your whiskers. Well, what do you think, Shane? It's a pip of a story, all right. Okay, work on it. Now you're talking. I'll put this paper on the map. I'll build up your circulation. I'll show you what a real sheet ought to look like. You know, when Linger was born. Yes, yes, I know. You were the guy that held the gun. Let it go. Let it pass. Drink, Shane? Hey, I don't mind if I do. Say, I'll beat it down and get my tux out of Hawk and go over to Peacock Inn and see what I can find out. No thanks, Mr. Henley. I had a drink. Had a drink, you bloated sponge. Come over here and tell me all about it. Gee, it's good to see you, Tess. Jimmy, what can I do if Phil finds out his sister's been running around with a gangster? I'll try to persuade him to drop the kid and get out of town. He'll laugh at you. Well, he's trying to get Phil in a spot where he can demand favors. You're awfully fond of Brandon, aren't you? Him I'm thinking of. Oh, I don't care about myself. I do. I've never ceased caring for you, Tess. Please, Jimmy. Well, I'm not trying to make this a modeling sentiment, but... You're more important to me than the kid or Brandon or anybody else. There's plenty of hell on earth. If you get a chance at some happiness, you're surely entitled to it. Jimmy, I've got to tell her. Oh, don't be silly. She'd only tell Brandon. Then where would you be? She wouldn't believe me anyway. Hated me from the moment I met it, Phil. She sensed something. Felt something. She knows I don't belong. Now, let me see. Lynn had left New York by the time I met you, hadn't he? Why, of course. He doesn't know about you and me. Why, I can go to him You'll and... You'll do nothing of a sort. You know how far you'd get with him. What can I do? Just this. You keep out of this no matter what happens. I'm not going to let you spoil your own life with Brandon. Now, you run along and I'll handle it. Thanks, Jimmy. There aren't many like you. Oh, forget it. You know, I swore that I'd never recognize you or speak to you again after you married Brandon. Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Oh, that's all right. Only you mustn't come here again. It's too much of a risk. And don't you call me. I'll call you. Come along. Good night. Good night.
Hello, sweet. Hello, darling. <laughs> oh, your heart's beating like a trip hammer. <laughs> you frightened me. I was asleep, I guess. Well, I told her not to stay up. Well, I decided that I would. Oh. Sit down. Where were you on the night of September the 12th, 1930, at 6 o'clock? I was at St. Mary's Cathedral, sir. What are you doing there? I was getting married, sir. Oh, getting married, eh? Yes, sir. Well, let me understand you. Did you love this man? Oh, yes, sir, I did. Did you promise to love, honor, and obey him? Yes, sir. Hmm. And since that time, have you, without any reservation of any kind, faithfully fulfilled that contract? Yes, sir, I have. You have it. Tell me about this husband of yours. Oh, sir, he's a brute at times. Hmm. Brute, eh? Yes, sir. Well, in what respect is he a brute? Well, you see, sir, I love him so very much. So much that at times I sit up till all hours of the night waiting for him to come home. And all I get for it, sir, is abuse. I see. So your husband's a brute, eh? <laughs> oh, you <laughs> are a fool. <laughs> Chief of police heard suspected of bribery. Paper. Citizens Committee and taken a district attorney's office for asking indictment. Here you are, morning paper. Paper, extra paper. If you go through with this crazy indictment, you lose the support of the Citizens League. We mean it. Uh, now tell me, uh, what would the Citizens League have me do? Wink my eye at corruption in office? We elected you to office. Chief Hurd is your husband's cousin, is he not, Mrs. Barton? That has nothing to do with the point. No? I thought it had everything to do with it. We put you in office on a prohibition ticket, Brandon. What have you done? Absolutely nothing. This town is full of speakeasies and roadhouses that ought to be closed up. Name one. What about Peacock Inn? All right, go ahead. What about it? People get drunk there. Peacock Inn does not sell liquor. People drink there just the same. And because the people break the law, I should close Peacock Inn, is that it? Most assuredly. My dear Mrs. Harrington, the proprietor of Peacock Inn is running a legitimate business. The law has no quarrel with those who do not break the law. You are committing political suicide, Brandon. Smarter men than I have made mistakes. Then you refuse to withdraw this. My dear sir, if I were to refuse to ask an indictment against Chief Hurd, I'd be a traitor to the people who elected me. You are already. Well, well that depends upon whose foot the shoe is on. Come, my friends. This is intolerable. Allow me. medicine, I take it? Yes, sir. Cough medicine. <coughs> and I take it. That blonde we threw out last night is in again, Mr. Dale. Well, get rid of her. We don't want any pickups working around here. No rows down there, Harry. You better bring her up here. She's on her way up. Yes, Mr. Dale. Has Joe Carson been around here this evening, Helen? No, Mr. Dale. I haven't seen him. Well, if he shows up, tell him I'm in the office. I want to see him. I'll do that. In here. All right, Harry. You can go. What's the idea of that guy throwing me out last night? Well, I'm sorry, Miss, uh... Madge Blake. Madge to you, Mr. Dale. Well, I'm awfully sorry, Madge, but I'd rather you wouldn't come here anymore. This joint's open to the public, ain't it? It all depends what kind of public. Well, I've got to make a living. 
tough in this town since that tackling district attorney started chasing us around. Mm, it wouldn't be a free country without reformers. A free country, my dimple. How do you think I'm going to eat? Have you ever seen one of the new hundred-dollar bills? <laughs> Haven't seen one of the old ones yet. Yeah. A whole century. And it ain't any bigger than a buck. No, that's yours. For what? For getting out of here and staying out. Are you kidding me? On the contrary, I'm quite in earnest. Your mother living? Well, yes. At least I guess she still is. All right, take that money and go home to her. She'll be glad to see you. Maybe you're right. I know I'm right. You're in a tough racket, Madge. You're the first man that ever talked decent to me, Mr. Dale. You've changed my whole slant on things. I guess I'll be going. All right. Start right away. The quicker, the sooner, you know. So long. Thanks a lot. Forget it. Hello, Blondie. Hello, Eddie. Long time no see. Yeah, you move so often I can't keep track of you. It's cheaper and safer. You address till rent day. Okay. The guy that said blonde was dumb was dumber. I guess you're right, Eddie. Well, what's on your mind? Not a thing. How's business? Couldn't be better. Oh, thanks. I got an awful bellyache from some sour gin I got downtown. <laughs> I'd give a quarter for a good shot of Applejack. Yeah? Yeah. Well, say, I didn't know you had anything around here. I haven't, to sell. You don't mean for me to uh, keep this? Why not? Oh, I didn't mean to. Oh, forget it. Just return the flask the next time you're around here. Sure. I got a great memory for names and places. Here's to a granite tombstone. <laughs> Maybe you could give me a little tip. What about? Well, this is strictly confidential. Of course. Didn't you used to run the Silver Bow in New York? Yeah. Do you know the district attorney's wife? Mrs. Brandon? Yeah. Wouldn't know if I saw her. Now, ain't that funny? Every time I see that dame, I say to myself, Eddie, you poor dumb cluck, you've lost your memory. Somewhere in a drunken moment, or a sober one, you've laid eyes on that frail. Now, where was it? Where was it? I'm sorry, Eddie, but I can't help you. I've never met Mrs. Brandon. No? No. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah? Pardon, Judge Moran, He wants a private dining room. Nothing doing. Give him a table on the floor. Right. Right. Say, did Brandon ever threaten to raid this joint? Why should he? We don't serve liquor here. Well, you never know what that bird will do. Here, have some matches. Oh! Well, I guess I'll shove off and see if I can pick up a little dirt. Go downstairs and get yourself a bite to eat. It's all free? Certainly. It's on the house to sign the check. Does that go for that Bulgarian caviar? By all means, yeah. So all you'll need is a new first mortgage. <laughs> all right, kids. Didn't mean to butt in. Hi. Hi, friend. I 
I told you not to come here, Tess. But no one saw no me. No one except the one man in the world who shouldn't have seen you. Who? This fellow Eddie Crane. But I don't know him. He doesn't know me. He's a reporter. He knows everyone. He's worse than a stool pigeon. What's the matter? Read this. It's not signed, but it's from Carson. I know it is. Marsha dropped it in the hole. Well, this calls for an answer. If she puts anything on paper with that bird, she's sunk. Oh, I was a fool not to tell Phil in the beginning. I might have known that someday somebody would find out about me. You got that kind of talk? That's all in the past. I'm going to tell him. He's got a right to know. And don't. A man will stand for anything except his wife's past bobbing up and hitting him in the face. I know, Jimmy, but what about Marcia? What have you done about Lynn? Nothing yet. He dropped out of sight. Until tonight, he hasn't been around. Not since I saw you. You've got to do something. You've got to get him away from here before something happens. All right. I'll make him let her alone. Jimmy, no. I promise. Oh, I didn't mean that. But he'll let her alone. Tess, you're prettier now than you were then. Please, Jimmy. You'll never know how I felt when you ran out on me. Well, you didn't have to do that. Oh, yes, I did. I was trying to beat something, but in the end, I guess it's going to beat me. Not if you'll do as I tell you. Now, you don't know me, understand? If you get into a jam, if they ask you any questions, you've never heard of me. You don't know Jimmy Dale. Promise? All right. All right, now, wrap that collar around your face and beat it. Now, go home, go to sleep, and forget all about it. All right, Jimmy, thanks. Wait a minute, I don't trust that Eddie Crane. He's got something on his mind. Here, step back. Okay. You're not smart. You're just a rummy big fellow. Just a... Hello, Mr. Carson. How are you? Got my reservation? Oh, sure. What a nice place. You like it? Oh, it's great. And they got good music, too. I thought I ordered a private dining room. Well, I'm sorry, but Mr. Dale changed it to a table on the floor. Private dining room. All right. Carson, I want to see him. Tell him I'm waiting up here. He's as good as there. All right, Harry. Oh, 
Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Jerry. I mean, Joe. I get your old name mixed up with the new one. Where have you been? All around. What's on your mind, Jimmy? I wanted to ask a favor of you. Oh, yeah? Well, make it snappy. I've got a lady waiting downstairs. Yeah, that's what I want to talk to you about. Is that so? Yeah. Time to come down on the world, haven't you, Jimmy? Running a soft drink joint out here in the wilderness? Well, I don't know. I'm making money and running no risk. Neither am I. Say! Who wants you, sneaking stool pigeon? What's the idea? Can't a gentleman enter an office without getting a kick in the slap? Cut it. Tail me around and you'll get a dose of lead poison. Yeah? What's the idea, Eddie? I just had my hand on the doorknob. I was coming in to return your flask, and this bird gives me the works. Beat it. Well, I guess it's a horse on me. Who was that guy? Reporter. Oh. Who's he after, you? I have a hunch he's after you. What do you mean, he's after me? You've been trailing around with the DA's sister, haven't you? What of it? If I were you, I'd drop her. Yeah, but you're not me. Come on, Joe, like a couple of pals. What's the game? Oh, I'm just cinching a few things around this town, that's all. Have a cigarette? Yeah, thanks. Jimmy, I'm tipping you off. Step out and don't give me advice. It's good advice. I don't tell you how to run your business, do I? Still, just to show you what a pal I am, I'll cut you in on mine, if you'll play my way. I'm out of the booze racket. Oh, tut tut, Jim. I'm not thinking of the gorilla stuff. This is brains, gentlemen, politics. And women? Well, I could have gotten sociable with the DA's wife, but I heard she used to be your girl. Work. And I'd never chisel in on any pal's girl. You spill, I spill, see? Pals, just like that. So long, Jimmy. So long, Jerry. I mean, Joe. Never take a drink when I'm on assignment. Yeah, and get kicked out of my bustle? You talk like a butt. They want you to keep a spot for me. If it wasn't who I said it was, I'm Mother India. I was in Jimmy Dale's office when she slid in, see? And he acted kind of funny. I tried to get an ear pull through Dale's door, but one of his bouncers came along and I had to beat it. Yeah, I know, you to kick the door down. Yes, you would, you big baboon. Well, I can't hold the first edition all night just on a hunch. Now listen, there's something going on out here, I tell you. If you don't hear from me by three o'clock, let the first edition go. But hold that front page open on the final till you hear from me. What do you think, Shane? Well, it's, it's a, a pip of a story, story, all right. Stop. Let it pass. Here, look. Come on, honey. Come and sit down where I can look at you. That's better. Like smoke? Please. Enough of that. Oh, come on. Sit down. Please. Let me go. 
Let me out of here. Now, don't be a child. I'm not what you think I am. Come on, don't spoil the party by being a no-girl. I told you distinctly to give him a table on the floor. Oh, I tried to, but he insisted on a private dining room. Give away from me. Hmm. Quite a strong young lady, aren't you? Oh, so you mean it, huh? Yes, I mean it. Well, listen, sister. You can't mean it with me. Please. Attorney's home. Tell Mrs. Brandon exactly what happened. Can't get her out the side door. Don't let anybody see who she is. Hurry up. Hurry up. What's up? Did she kill him? What do you mean? Wasn't that Tess Brandon? Say, that's the guy that kicked me in the sweats. What happened? I shot him. Yeah? Congratulations. Self defense, Eddie. Here's his gun. You think I'm blind? Who was the dame? What dame? The woman they carried through those doors. So you're seeing things. That was Tess Brandon. I recognized her in your office. You're crazy. I killed him. Do your stuff. You want me to call the cops? Sure, go ahead. There's the phone. You really want me to? Sure. Okay. Come on, sister, make a snap. Oh, nuts. Jimmy Henley. Well, bust in on him. Don't worry, he couldn't fire a furnace. Say, I'll lay off and let you beat it if you'll give me a little information. Nothing doing, Eddie. I'll stick. Okay. Hello, Henley. Say, there's a guy bumped off out here in one of the private dining rooms. Is he dead? Have you ever been bumped off? Now listen, hold the front page open. There's a dame mixed up in it, too. Well, you do that. Call, ask for Sergeant Blair. Yeah, we owe him a break. Tell him there's a killing out here, but nothing else. Get me? Nothing else. You gonna take the rap? Naturally. Why? I did it. You're covering the dame. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Clam, eh? Do you want to know who the guy is I bumped off? I get all that. What I'm interested in is who was the dame they carried through those doors? Who was she? I don't know. Oh, come on, spill. I'll give you the break. Oh, Eddie, you're boring me. All right. You're next. I'm Crane of the Citizen. Oh, you want to see Mr. Brandon? No, I want to see you. Oh. Oh. 
And what did you want? I was in Jimmy Dale's private office tonight when you were there. Later, I saw you carried out of that private dining room when Carson was shot. But you're mistaken, Mr. No. Brandon. Now, Mrs. Brandon, I'm not cockeyed and I'm not drunk. I saw you with Dale when that bird was shot. But I was not at the Peacock Inn. How do you know Jimmy Dale runs the Peacock Inn? You well, don't want to admit it, it's all okay. But I saw you, I got the story, and I'm going to make it stick. I know all about you and Jimmy Dale in New York. And if it means anything to you, and I think it does, he's being held for this killing, and he's offering no alibi. Please don't print that story. I'm sorry for you, Mrs. Brandon. Maybe you had a right to croak him. I guess you think I'm a heel. Maybe I am. But somebody's going to print this story, and it might as well be me. All right. Since you know everything, I'll admit it. I was there. I am the woman they carried out. That's all I have to say. Now, you get out of here. Okay. You told that reporter that you killed Joe Carson. I won't let you take the blame. I'm not a coward. I killed him, and I'm going to tell the truth. You were not in that room tonight, do you understand? Why should you want to shield me after the way I've treated you? I'm not shielding you. I'm thinking of Phil. Phil? Well, I'll tell him. He'll get me out of this. Have you ever had one thought that didn't concern yourself? Don't you realize it would kill Phil to have his sister on trial for murder? Oh, I know. But he feels just as bad as to have you mixed up in this affair. Well, tomorrow the papers will carry the story that I was the woman in that room, that I killed Joe Carson. Oh, you must stop them. Too late now. You're not telling the truth. All right, I'm not. You've hated me from the moment your brother married me. You said that I didn't belong, that I took advantage of my position. Well, it's true. I haven't played fair. Still didn't ask me who or what I was, and I didn't tell him. But tomorrow, the newspapers will. They'll tell him and you and the whole world that I was Jimmy Dale's sweetheart and lived with him for a year. Now do you understand why it doesn't make any difference as far as I'm concerned? Why I must be the woman who was in that room? Well, Phil will get over the hurt of finding out what I was, but if he knew that his sister had done this thing, it would, why, it would break his heart. Oh, oh, I hate myself. I've been a selfish fool. I spoiled your life with Phil. Oh, dear. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. I'll call you. We can't get anything out of that guy, Chief. One of them close mouth babies, eh? Yeah. He's got a story and he sure sticks to it. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello, Henley. No, he ain't talked yet. But he's gonna talk. <laughs> All right, I'll call you. Now listen, Dale. You might as well come through. I've told the boys all I know. What do you mean, all you know? Who was this guy, Carson? What's his real name? Carson. Not that phony handle. His real name. Well, you might as well forget it, Corrigan. I've told you all I'm going to. Mm, is that so? You're asking us to believe you shot this guy. And then busted the door in to get out. Who crashed that door? And why? Who else was in the room? We were alone. What are you fighting about? Oh, just an old feud. Uh, a couple of gorillas from the east, eh? Maybe. Gang stuff don't go in this town. You might as well come through, Dale. Give us that guy's tag and we'll make it easier for you. Yeah, you might get second degree. Oh, I'm through, boys. Yeah?
Now what about it, Dale? Come on, Bozo, talk. Oh, I get all teamed up about it. You want the chair, hey? What did Carson come to see you about? Why were you in the private dining room? Instead of your office. And why did you bust the door in? And who was the dame? Crane saw a woman. Come on, Dale, who You're was it? You're wasting your time. I said I killed him. You're covering somebody. Why? Crane will swear he saw a dame. Come on, who was she, Dale? You're a fool to take this rap. I said I killed Carson. Now, you've got my confession. Let me alone. I'm through. I'm through. We'll see about that. Go ahead, boys. Come on, Dale. I'll talk. Honest, Corrigan, if I knew, I'd kill you. Well, look here, Crane. Are you holding out on me? You wouldn't. <laughs> Not much. Are you sure you don't know who the woman was? Oh, sure. Well, you've got a lot of appreciation. You have. Wasn't I the guy that tipped you off? Okay, then. Pull in your horn. Will he burn when he reads the morning citizen? Wow! You're the best rotten reporter in this town, Eddie. Thanks, G. You're so good that you've got me in a spot. Now, oh, what are you belly aching about? My conscience. You never had any. You're guessing at a lot of things. Well, we can back them up. Yes, you can. Maybe. No, oh, maybe about it. Didn't she confess to me? Didn't she say she was in that room? What more do you want? But suppose we can't tie it up. But we got it tied up. That bird Carson, whoever he was, knew about him in New York and followed him out here to shake him down. What do you think, Shane? Well, it's a... Don't say it, Shane. Don't say it. Well, I wasn't going to. But I will say this. We can't hold the first much longer. Make a new lead. What's the matter with my lead? District attorney's wife shoots man in private dining room. Now, listen, Eddie. I'm a newspaper man, but I'm human, too. Brandon and I grew up together in this town. Ah, you yellow piker. Well, what are you going to do? Print it or kill it? You're going to print it the way I wrote it. You make a new lead, Shane. Mystery woman involved. There's only one point to the story. Mrs. Brandon had a pass. She and Dale bumped off. The bird was going to tip it off. Shut up. Make a new lead. You've Mystery been, woman involved in murder. You've been after Brandon for a year. Now you've got him and you're going to back down. Play up this mystery woman. Kill all reference to Brandon or his wife. You know what to do. Police in the dark. Know nothing of a woman in the case. Eddie Crane, report of a citizen holds key to the mystery. Ah, oh, do I get a byline, Chief? Yes, you scum. I'm going to run your name. Matter, baby. Now I'll play with you. You get that, you little brass monkey? By Eddie Crane. Or I'll make you eat the whole first edition. <laughs> sure, there's a screw loose. It's in your head. It's your brain. Why, you... Guy Crane knows who the woman is. The double-crossing little shrimp. Quite a story, isn't it? Yeah. They sure take a few left-handed cracks at you without mentioning any names. They'll be here in a few minutes. Dale clings to his original confession, does he? Yeah. Hasn't changed a word. Hmm. Still will give no reason or motive, eh? He says it's just a feud of long standing. But I think he's holding something back. Yes, colleague, and there's more to the story than he's told. Do you know something, D.A.? Much as they do, at any rate. Well, we got to get some dope on the guy he killed. And I don't think his name's Carson. Neither do I. Oh, what do you think of that damn dirty little cur anyway? I wonder where Crane got his leader for that story about a woman. Oh, that's some stuff those guys cook up to increase circulation. Right. You didn't find anything out about a woman being there with Dale and Carson, did you? Not a thing. Not a thing. No. Harry, the head waiter, said that Carson came in alone. Mm. Yeah. Show them in. Are the boys bringing Dale here? I'll run over and pick him up myself. This way, gentlemen. Hi. Hello, Crane. 
Make up your mind. Oh. Hello, Bob. How are you, Phil? Sit down. Thanks. Bob, you printed a story in The Citizen about a woman being carried out of Peacock Inn just after Carson was murdered. That's our lead. We can prove it. Can you prove it? You bet we can. You really believe that there was a woman in that room with Dale and Jerry Lynn? 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 You mean the guy that called himself Carson was Jerry Lynn, the big shot in New York? Well, how should I know? I'm only the district attorney. What are you trying to do, kid me? Well, since you're so anxious about it, I may as well tell you that it was Jerry Lynn. By the way, Crane, where did you get your story? Out it. You see. Have you talked to Dale? No, not yet. He's coming over here now. Well, I hope you get a near fall. And you think you'll get Dale to tell a different story from the one we've printed? I really don't know, Bob. But all things are possible. Say, why don't you birds quit stalling and lay your cards on the table? Oh, shut up, Eddie. I'm shut. Well, this is going to be good. Hello, Mr. Dale. All right, Eddie. No talking, Dale. Uh, not to you, Carl. Uh, Dale. Sit here. Well, now that we're all here... Shut your mouth, Stooge. That'll do, Colin. Be quiet. Okay. Dale. Yes, sir? Is there a woman in this case? If there is, I ought to know it. You're in the tragic position of going to the chair for murder. Then I'll be one of the immortals. Now, if there is a woman involved, is there any reason why you should shield her at your expense? But I know her. Colin. Take off those handcuffs. But he Bring might... Thanks. You have placed yourself on record as saying that there was no woman in that room, either before or after the murder. That's right. You are willing to go on trial for murder, knowing that the chances are all against you? I've confessed my guilt. Gentlemen, Mr. Dale is lying. There was a woman in the room. Who was that woman, Henley? I... I don't know. You answer for him, Dale. There wasn't any woman. Well, Crane. All right, I'll tell you. Shut up, Eddie. My story, I'm the guy that wrote it, and I'm the guy that's going to make it stick. I'm sick and tired of hearing you bleating around about yourself and telling other people there are a lot of dumb clucks. You asked for it, and I'm going to give it to you right in the face. The woman in that room is your wife, and nobody else but your wife. Is that the story you stopped? I killed the name, Phil. I wouldn't run it. Did you do it for me, or were you afraid you couldn't back it up? Both, I guess. Thanks. Yes, Mr. Brandon. Have Mrs. Brandon come up. Oh, what's the use of dragging her into this? She didn't kill him. I tell you, I did it. Oh, you want the story? Well, hang it on to me. Good God, Henley, you wouldn't crucify a woman for a front page sensation. I won't run it. Sure. I won't run it, Eddie. Crane has found out that my wife was formerly in what is known as a racket. That she gave it up and came here, ultimately to become my wife. Now, out of that, he has built up a rotten story which he hoped you would publish in The Citizen. Crane is the type of reporter who is a disgrace to any American newspaper. He has undoubtedly told you also that my wife was Jimmy Dale's sweetheart in New York. Well, let me tell you, gentlemen, that if my wife was anyone's sweetheart, before she met me, I'm proud that it was a man who had the courage and principle to go to the electric chair in defense of a woman's good name. Not many of you newspaper men would do that. Let me add, gentlemen, that I love my wife. 
and that have passed does not alter that love. I won't print it, Phil. I won't print it. So you see, it is true. There was a woman in the dining room last night, but that woman was not my wife. It was my sister. Carrigan, go to my home. Arrest my sister for the murder of Jerry Lynn. Boy, is this a beat? Get this, you bald-headed old eagle, and smear it all over the front page with a byline by Eddie Crane. For the first time in newspaper history, it is possible to give the public a jury's verdict before the judge gets it. Is that a beat? Is that a beat? I'll say it's a beat. Hey there, is that long-haired old blue nose still holding out for conviction? Come on, come on, is he still holding out? Hold the wire, Stoop. There's more coming. Say, will you hurry up and read their lips? I can't be here all day. Will you tell him to tell you so you can tell me what that fellow's telling the other guy? There it is. Juror number five says to juror number six, hurry up and get this over so I can go home and water my lawn. Yeah, ain't that a fine lot of gab for a murder jury? Go and rest yourself. Hello, Chan. I'm going to give it to you just as I see it. Slow your ear to that wire. You all set? Here it comes, hot off the griddle. The blue nose is still holding out for conviction. The guy with his coat off tears his hair and walks away. The blue nose is in the corner. Now he's out of the corner. He's in, he's out, he's out, he's in. What? I'll make up my mind when I get ready. He's out. He's in, he's out. Two others barge in. Looks like anybody's fight. They shove the blue nose into a chair. He's up, he's down, he's down, he's up. Huh? Same goes for you. Boy, is this a beat? Hot from the jury room. And it's by Eddie Crane. He's in. He's out. Now he's threatening the blue nose. The blue nose is on his feet. He's up again. Now he's down. He's up. He's down. He's sweating. He's sore. He's mad as a boiled owl. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Looks like he's weakening. Four of the jurors surround the blue nose. He's giving in. He's breaking. He hesitates. They urge him. He gives in. They slap him on the back. And the verdict is not guilty. Get that beagle push. The Brandon girl is not guilty. By Eddie Crane and the beat of the century. Marshal Brandon acquitted the murder of Jerry Lynn. Special extra paper. DA sister acquitted the murder. Well, I wonder what's holding them up. Well, if we don't get here pretty soon, we'll have to use flash powder. Yeah. Here they are. Can we take your picture, Mr. Brandon? Yes, if you want to. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Sure, swell testimony you handed out. I guess you weren't so bad yourself. Me? I feel like a heel. Well, you're all right, Eddie. Yeah, in a piece of pork. Forget it. We're all wrong sometimes. Sure took guts to do what that bird did. Brandon? Yeah. He made me look like a moron. I guess I ought to be writing Sunday school tracks. Well, I'll be seeing you down at the joint. Not me, Eddie. Huh? I'm on my way to Paris. Paris? Say, do me a favor, will you? Try to. They don't allow them to come through the mail. Okay, bring them back with you. 